Well, with with the idea of, of who gets to be called a philosopher, uh, I wanted to, to transition to talk a little bit about Philip K. Dick. Man, I, I love him. He's crazy. He's like C.S. Lewis if he took LSD and lost like a lot of his hope, maybe. Um, <laughs> yeah. But 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 I, I came to find out that like he he studied some philosophy in undergrad, and so some of oh, this yeah. made some sense. Um, do you think that like when you think of Philip K. Dick, um, obviously everyone says, well, sci-fi author and you know. Um, uh, Blade Runner, you know the the book behind Blade mm-hmm. Runner. Do you, do you think of him as a as a philosopher? Can can we rightly call him that? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I mean, if we if we broaden the sense enough, maybe. But then we'd have to say that he's a philosopher who does his philosophy through uh, literary media, right? Yeah, and, and yeah. not just like philosophical dialogues, like say Plato or the other dialogue writers but through i mean this is part of what i really love about dick is he he's eminently philosophical like dostoevsky is also like shakespeare is right Mm. Um, or uh jorge luis borges or Mm. ursula k Le Guin, um and he'll have his characters working through um ideas from philosophy, psychology, and, and theology, sometimes in dialogue with each other, sometimes in like interior monologues, sometimes remembering what they learned back in school or something like that, and then seeing an application. And what's, what's really interesting is he will sometimes, he doesn't worry like a cobblestone would with like, I got to present this, you know, exactly the way it was you know what Nietzsche was saying he'll pick up on whatever he wants and he'll he'll use it sometimes deforming it in the process but oftentimes revealing to us sides that we're kind of missing out on and so I think that um, what goes on in his works you know we get to see ordinary people engaging with philosophical ideas in a way that you'd like to see happening in, you know, like an intro class, but yeah. he's, and he's not doing it as at an intro level either. He's, he's no. doing it at a, like a graduate level. Yeah. So, you know, to come back to the question, does that make you a philosopher? Um, I don't know. Um, I think I think it's better to look at him like like a Dostoevsky, like somebody mm. who knows a lot of philosophy, has thought an awful lot about it, but is is more concerned with um, writing good stories. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Greg, because it doesn't seem like he, it doesn't seem like he's trying to teach us a lesson. Uh, mm. And if it is, right, it's not. Right. It's, it's not on the nose. There's a, he 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 has his book. It's not Time straightforward. Out. Right, yeah. right. Um, are you familiar with Time Out of Joint? Mm-hmm. So in there, he doesn't tie up, like most of his books, he doesn't tie up all the loose ends. And you're like, wait, <laughs> yeah. what, what happened here? In Time Out of Joint, he uh, you find out that, you know, he's in, um, uh, what, what's that movie with Jim Carrey? Uh, they, they totally oh, Eternal, Sunsh- or Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind? Is that no, the that, that, one, that one's close to it, but, uh, yeah, uh, but um... uh, Trum- Truman Show. It's basically oh, Truman right, Show, right, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and um, but so you go, okay, fine. Um, you know, he he had his memory repressed, and you know, he's really mapping out bombs and stuff. But there's this weird scene where time stopped, and he went to like a, a lemonade stand or something like that, and he found these words. They were just words on paper, and he, he he all these like items out in reality started turning into just the words. And you're like, there's something there with like philosophy of language type stuff and con- concepts and how we view the world and maybe some. Um, Kant in there, like, this is going to be crazy when he reveals what he's doing here. And he just doesn't tie it up. And you're like, wait, yeah, yeah. what happened with the little slips of paper with words on them? <laughs> and he's collecting them. And you just, no, 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 it doesn't resolve. Yeah, I mean, you could, this is a little bit of a tangent to that, but I think you could think of like a, what a lot of his characters are going through as they're, they're not just philosophical thought experiments, which are rather short, like maybe a paragraph to sure. two pages, but they're more like, well, what if this really was the case? How would things pan out? You know, mm. um, that's that's what uh, that's what's going on in a lot of the stories. You know, like yeah. what, what would be the I mean, so think about man in the high castle. What would be the case if the historically the the Nazis and the. Uh, imperial japanese had won the war and what would be the case if like there were multiple dimensions that you could move one to the other and stuff like that you know 